Hello, we are live. Welcome in. My name is Beretta Fleur. If you're not familiar with my work, I am an author, podcaster, and confidence coach, and I help people and entrepreneurs just like you lead happier, more successful, more fulfilling lives. And I do that through coaching, content, and storytelling. Welcome in. Comment below. Hi, Jace. Hi, hello. Comment where you're from, and um, you can always watch this on the replay too. I'm going to post it on YouTube. So, today's topic is being your own boss and starting your own business, and that could mean kind of shifting careers, or it could just mean um, kind of going from being employed somewhere to saying, well, I wanna strike out on my own in the same field. Um, I have a couple questions that have come in so I am going to kind of get to a few of them. If you have any questions, just type them in the comments below. I will try to get to them if I can today. Um, we're not gonna be live for very long, so um, let me get started. So I had a question from Lauren and she said, um, well, actually she was asking about coaching because she was wondering about careers. And she asked me specifically why I chose coaching. Um, a little bit of background, I've always had a career in design and I've always had a career in sort of the creative publishing field. And I really like it. I really love the whole creative aspect of it. I love marketing, I love all that kind of stuff. But um, I just felt like it didn't have a lot of impact so oftentimes what I would do is to try to do um, nonprofit work, uh, animal rescue. I was actually on the board of a nonprofit for animal rescue. Um, I did a couple publications where the proceeds went to veterans groups. So always trying to do something that had impact um, in my work, because for me, it's not always been about a paycheck. That is something that's important, but at the end of the day, for me, it has to um, mean something else too. So uh, that is kind of why when I, I've always had a freelance design business and I've had that for about 15 years, a little more maybe. I don't know, I don't wanna date myself too much, but uh, about 15 years, let's say. And um, so coaching for me kind of dovetailed really well into the whole marketing field and client services. I've always really loved helping somebody start up their business. When I've ever done any agency work or advertising work, I've always loved the impact of like, oh my gosh, you're helping me grow my business. So for me, um, coaching just kind of took off uh, as something that I found myself doing. And then I thought, why don't I try to do this and get paid to do it too, instead of just designing ads and then giving a bunch of advice. So uh, that's kind of how it started. And it's not just career coaching, it's also relationship coaching. I call it confidence coaching because I feel like confidence is a huge factor in our personal lives and our business lives. So um, that is how I got started with coaching. And um, it's been a slow roll. 2020 was a weird year to start your own business, but it, it was also kind of a an interesting year because I felt like more people were open. Um, which brings me to the next question from Annabelle, Anna, Annabella Free, um, said, do you, would you recommend working from home if you're doing your own business or should you get a storefront? Um, and I really think it depends on what you're doing. I really feel like um, for a lot of things, especially with the whole COVID thing that's happened with a lot of businesses closing, um, I really feel like, I mean, you could have your own storefront, but more and more things are moving to online. And what I have noticed is people are a lot more receptive to, oh, you work out of your home. You know, it's less sketchy now for lack of a better word. So you don't need a storefront. I would think that you probably should actually try and cut costs and not do storefront. And then that might be something that you move into later on, like an office or office space, um, like maybe a collective. Uh, if you're not comfortable, if you need to meet clients and you don't wanna meet at Starbucks, cause I don't know, just 
it's a little weird. <laughs> um, you could actually rent a co-op space. I used to be really enthralled with WeWork. I don't really know what they're doing right now, but um, any kind of office collective space where you can rent something from a uh, a phone booth to make phone calls from, um, to a tiny little office, to just a cool space that you can you can pay a monthly fee and actually pay to meet there. Um, so you can meet clients there, which is really cool. I mean, I, I love that sort of idea. So that might be something that you look into um, if you're thinking about like whether or not to do a storefront and you don't really feel like working from home is gonna completely do it for you. Um, and then, Backing, piggybacking off of that, um, do I need seed money or an investor to start my business? No, you don't. Um, you don't need an investor. Actually, I find that um, I have a whole lot more freedom because I don't have any investors. Um, my investors are my clients. So um, I don't really feel like I have to answer to anybody with what I decide to put funds toward. Um, seed money is kind of like, yes, but not like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars probably, depending on your product, depending on your service. Um, there will be some initial upfront investments that you have to be willing to make. Um, and I'm gonna go into that a little bit more because that's kind of, that's really important. But I don't want you to feel like just because you don't have thousands and thousands of dollars lying around um, that you can't start your own business because that's, that's, that's lame. You don't wanna do that. You wanna go out there. You wanna be your own boss. You wanna, you know, do what you wanna do. Um, so hold that thought because that kind of will uh, factor into something else I wanna go into. Um, Suzy Q, what should I do first if I want to have my own business in a year? Um, this is actually good because it goes into the whole money thing too. Um, and it's actually pretty timely because we have had, uh, <laughs> we've had this fence in our backyard that's slowly been going like this over the past forever. Um, it got hit hard when we got a flood like years ago. If you remember Harvey on the news, that was like my neighborhood floating down the street. Um, but yeah, our fence got really badly damaged and it was falling down. Anyway, so these fence guys come up and I'm like, oh, okay, they're putting in a fence. This is neat, I'm gonna watch. And for the whole first day, they were just sitting there and they had these levels and they had these these chalk lines and these, these this post digger and like all this stuff that was really like really time consuming and it didn't look like it was going anywhere. And I was like, what the heck? Like why it was taking so long, like I'm a professional fence builder, right? And then I realized, oh, it's totally foundation. If they don't have the foundation, the whole fence is just gonna collapse again, especially if you know we have flooding going down the hill. So um, that was kind of a good reminder um, because it's really important when you're thinking about starting anything new in life, especially a jump in careers, and especially, especially if it's a change in career field, that you have a foundation. And part of the foundation that you wanna do is you wanna plan. You wanna plan, you wanna plan kind of a couple things. First of all, you wanna do research and you want to talk to people who have their own business, um, especially if they're in your field. You really wanna see what's out there as far as what will be your competition. I think there's enough business for everybody and I love competition. I think it keeps us you know, on our toes and I think it keeps us innovative and inspired. Um, and we can all like help each other. Uh, friendly competition. And um, you really wanna see what is being done out there in your field. You wanna see what leaps are being taken. You wanna see where people are going. Um, obviously being a person on social media evolves every couple years. And there's always, you know, we're told that it's this content. No, it's this content. No, it's this. No, it's this. So um, being well informed and very educated on the norms that are going on in your preferred field or how you want to go into business for yourself, that's really important for you to invest the time in to research and get to know. Um, so you're not just kind of like, oh, I want to be a fireman and then jumping into it and not having any clue as to what a fireman actually does. <laughs> or how they market their business. 
So, well, you don't really, oh, never mind. You don't really market a fireman business, but that's okay. The analogy kind of broke down. Um, so yeah, foundation, super important. You want to do research. Um, you also want to have a plan with the financial side. Um, for me, I was always employed on the side with freelance design work here and there. So that has always been something that I could fall back on to pay the bills. Um, and that's really important. So if you have that, you're gonna have way more freedom to be able to build your own business. Um, if you have a skill or a trade or something you can fall back on, even if it's just, you know, being a nanny, cleaning houses. Um, my sister, sorry, Amy, if I'm about to like out you, <laughs> but my sister has this really successful furniture refinishing business, right? And she's kind of done things here and there to make the money that she needed to buy all the supplies and to kind of help pay the bills while she was building her furniture business. And now she like redoes people's kitchens and makes all this custom furniture. Um, I wish I had her website here. Um, I would share it. I'll, I'll link it in the show notes later when I put it on YouTube. But um, yeah, just anything you can do to start your business, whether it's watching kids, cleaning houses, um, maybe refining, refinishing furniture, something to bring in a little bit of extra money that you can either use to fall back on and pay the bills, or you can put aside to have your own little nest egg towards starting your business. Um, when you think about the financials and you think about uh, the things that you want to be doing um, when you start your business is you want to make sure that you have um, a lot of, I don't want to say, I would, I'm going to say financial goals. Um, it's not very realistic to make a ton of money right up front. There sadly is not a get rich quick answer most of the time. Um, prepare to be bombarded by a lot of ads, especially on Insta and Facebook on start your own business, be an entrepreneur, blah, blah, blah. You know, the latest thing and the latest tech, like be prepared to like, just be inundated with all of that. Um, most of it is not true. If you see something that's, you know, double and triple and quadruple your, your followers overnight and all that stuff, that's not gonna happen. Um, but you should have goals. You should have growth, growth goals and you should have financial goals um, because it's harder to put that into place once the ball is rolling and it's just snowballing and you don't have any time. To, you can't go backward and build that infrastructure. So what you wanna do is take a good, I would say six to eight months at least um, on a timeline and say, okay, if I wanna be in business for myself, in nine months from now, say, or a year from now. Then in three months, I wanna make sure that I have my website up, all of my branding taken care of, all of my social handles figured out, and I want to have a little bit of money to invest in marketing, whether that's advertising, um, Google ads, whatever you decide that you want to do, and just spend the time researching that. So when you have that built up in the first, I would say, quarter, um, you're going to be able to kind of take that and run with it and you'll already have a place to send people because you also are going to get word of mouth. Um, so first thing you want to do is kind of plan all of that out. And then the next couple months, I would say spend researching and educating. I have taken a lot of free and some paid webinars, classes, workshops from people who really want to help entrepreneurs and people who have their own businesses. Um, and I am always learning, you know, and I've been doing this for a pretty long time, just being in business for myself, but there's always something new to learn. So be prepared to invest a little bit of time in researching, um, just whether it's business, ethics, I guess, <laughs> if it's it's best practices, I should say, um, in the field that you're going into, if it's the technology people are using, all that stuff. So that's pretty much what you want to do to kind of, you want to plan out. So make your timeline. And if you need help with that, um, shoot me a DM. 
I'm glad to kind of give you a couple ideas. I'm not going to charge you for it. This is kind of what I love to do. Um, and of course, if you do want more in-depth coaching, uh, BerettaFleur.com coaching has all of that info and a free quiz. Um, and I'm always happy to help with coaching with that. I have one, let's see, one more question, I think, from Elisa. Okay, this was a good one. I thought this was good. This is a good one to leave you guys with. Um, I am wanting freedom, but what can I realistically expect if I'm working for myself? And that's, that's kind of it, right? That's the, that's the gamble. Um, expect to work your butt off. <laughs> expect to um, be sitting in front of your computer and realizing that it's nine o'clock at night and the lights just kind of, the sun went down and the room is dark and you're just sitting there at your desk like, what am I even doing? I fell down this rabbit hole of stats two hours ago <laughs> and um, where's dinner? We're ordering pizza. Um, no, so yeah, prepare to work your butt off, Elisa, but also prepare to have fun and understand that a bad day working for yourself is better than any day where you're not working for yourself because you have freedoms to design your life, design your whole schedule, um, design when you take vacations and when you see your family. Um, you can even structure your whole day. I, a little bit of background, I worked my butt off at a desk job uh, kind of recently, a few years ago, and um, I just, I, my health got really bad. I wasn't, I wasn't myself. Um, I just wasn't enjoying it anymore. And I, I didn't pay attention to my own life, but I was working my butt off and I was loving it, but it also wasn't, it was, it was sucking my life out instead of investing in my own life. And that's kind of why I made the switch to go back to just doing a business for myself full time, because it's really important for you to have that freedom and to feel like I control my destiny. I control how much money I make. I control um, the time that I spend at my desk versus I get to go on a walk or I get to go see my partner for dinner. Um, so that really is huge. You do get that freedom. Now, you will need to practice discipline if you are not self-disciplined, if you're not good at creating a schedule. Um, a little hint for you, why I decided to do lives every Friday was to kind of challenge myself to be like, you know, you could sit back and do content whenever you felt like it because you're your own boss. Um, so I kind of had a self-talk with myself as like employer to employee, like, dude, just because you have freedom doesn't mean that you can just like never do a video or do two videos a month. It's just not going to cut it. You're just going to, you're, and I saw my numbers just like, Neh. like not growing, not doing anything. Um, and fortunately I have a good word of mouth base right now. Um, but if I do want to grow and I do want to get my numbers up, I do have to publish regularly and I have to just sit down and be disciplined. So that is another um, expectation is you're going to have to discipline yourself and you're gonna have to be very real with yourself. You're going to have to tell yourself when your numbers are dismal. Um, but you're also going to be really excited and proud of yourself when you do well. Um, I managed to double uh, traffic on one of my, uh, my videos um, as far as just the watches, just because I changed some title stuff, I did some keyword searches, I did a whole bunch of stuff just to change it because I had done research and I was like, oh, good job, self. You just like increased your views. That's awesome. So, um, hi, how are you, Ramin? Um, Ramin, I hope I'm saying your name right. Sorry. <laughs> um, so that for me was, it was all about the discipline and the discipline does have a payoff. So, you know, it's, it's, Expect to be disciplined, but expect to have fun and expect your hard work to pay off. So basically that is it. If anybody has any more questions, I am going to wait a second to see if anybody has any questions. If not, I am going to 
Let's see. I think that's it for my pre-questions. So if anybody doesn't have anything else, <laughs> oh, good, good. Okay, <laughs> good. I'm glad I got your name right. Okay, sorry, I'm back. I have a timer on my phone. We're talking about discipline, right? So I have a timer on my phone to say, oh, you've spent too much time on Instagram today. You know, go work. <laughs> so, um, but I will see you guys next Friday. And again, you can catch replays on youtube.com slash Beretta Fleur. I am also on Facebook, Parlor, TikTok, and Clubhouse. Thanks. I will see you guys later. Bye.